I went to Marysville High School and then I went down to Ohio University and got my bachelor's degree down there. And then I went to Knoxville, Tennessee for three years and then I've been back up here um, in Columbus. I'm what's called a multimedia journalist. I do everything. I uh, do the interviews, I shoot my own video, I edit my own video, I write my own stories, I uh, make my own graphics, I do everything that's, that's imaginable and it's becoming a bigger and bigger thing, at least in the journalism world, uh, that people do more and more with fewer and fewer people on staff. So the more you guys can do to learn everything, um, the better off you'll be. Do you guys, does everyone in here want to be on camera? Do you want to do behind the scenes stuff? What's kind of, what's kind of the vibe you guys have? Yeah. Well, I, I want to be on camera. Yeah? I want to be a on camera meteorologist. That's very exciting. Um, we have, I have a friend that actually did, that, did that um, in college um, and more and more with, with that type of thing they're actually encouraging people to get a meteorological degree. Um, so you would do something with, um, with broadcasting in school but then also get some sort of science degree because more and more it's becoming um, the science behind doing the weather as opposed to just standing in front of the weather screen which is what I did in college. I didn't know what I was talking about. You guys do announcements here in the morning, right? Or no, you're your first level, so not yet? Yeah. We're going to do it eventually a couple times. We haven't done it yet. Yeah? yeah we'll, do, we'll do recorded shows a couple times during the year. Yeah? This class. Well, we haven't done it yet, though. They haven't even gotten the show started yet too early in the year. Very cool. Well, just to, to tell you a bit about my day. Um, first of all, I'm sorry I'm late. I was telling Amanda when I came in, no one's ever late in TV. I mean, no one's ever on time in TV. Everyone's always late. Um, the only thing that starts on time is the newscast. Um, but I, I'm an early morning reporter, so I do get up at an ungodly hour. I'm up at 1.30 every day. I get to bed around 7.30, 7, 6.30. Today I'll go to bed like at 4 because I'm really tired. Um, uh, but that, but that's, not, that's not what everyone does. I mean, I'm... I'm the only person in our station that's a reporter that gets up that early. But I'm in the station at 3, 3.30, and then we go on the air at 4.30, and then I am live from 4.30 up possibly all the way through 10. But that's not the case usually. It's usually between 7.30 and 8 or 8.30. And it's hitting every half hour, so you got it, that's like eight or nine live shots every morning. And then I do, which is why I was late today, I was in our noon today, so I was live at noon and then 12.30. And then I usually leave an additional story for five. Um, just for background with, with TV news at least, um, most reporters and most stations will write everything for their story. So literally from when the anchor starts, the first sentence through the, when I tag out at the end, I've written everything that you see. Um, there's sometimes there's a misperception as if there's a producer somewhere you know, writing everything and then the talent just stands in front of the camera and reads it. That's what anchors do. Um, reporters don't do that. Most, some anchors do write their own stuff. Um, but I know we have different shifts at our station. So like day side shift, which is your typical reporter, was in like at 8.30 or 9. And then they'll report through the 6 or, you know, through, they're there until 7 or so. They do the night news. And then we have a but third shift a lot of places. We have a night side crew that starts at 2. And then they report for the 5 and 6 and also for the 10 on Fox and then the 11 for ABC. And then they'll stay and also put all their stuff all online. Um, and then I'm trying to think of what else to tell you about what I do every day. Um, I'm, I, I do a lot of spot news in the morning. So I get out and it'll be a situation where I'll come in and there'll be some sort of issue that happened overnight. It's usually a, uh, a crime of some sort, whether it's a break-in or if there's a fire or if there's, um, today we had a bomb threat at a gas station down in, um, Jeffersonville by the outlets down there. Um, so you know, you show up and I'll show up on a scene and I'll gather information and then I'll usually, if it's breaking news, I'll be on TV within like five or ten minutes. I'm um, arriving and saying, you know, chasing down some official and saying, hey, what's going on? You know, making some quick notes. And then you do it live and you just do that throughout the morning. Um, what questions do you guys have for me? What do you want to know? I don't want to sit and just kind of babble about my work. Do you guys have any questions at all? OU. 
Are you guys freshmen, sophomore, junior, seniors? Yes. Oh, okay. Junior. Yeah. Uh, what grade did you know that you wanted to do journalism? I didn't until I was a junior in college. I actually, I, I'm sorry? What did you major in then? Uh, I went to school for telecommunications. Um, I, really wa I originally wanted to work with film, be a film director. Um, that's a lot of work. <laughs> um, and I, I, I kind of stumbled into it. Actually, if I would have had something like this in school, I think I would have found it out sooner, because this is really cool, what she was telling me you guys do. I basically went to school um, for a telecommunications video production major, which I wanted just to direct, and that's what a lot of people get a directing degree in. Um, so I started out just doing technical stuff um, for some very student-run productions at a high university, and just found out I, I, didn't, I couldn't get as excited about the technical stuff as I thought I should be, and that's what I wanted to do. So I um, had a friend that was in the journalism program. I said, you, know, you should come look at this. And I did, and I really liked it. Um, so then I switched to majors, which my parents loved, halfway through college, um, and uh, just kind of figured it out from there. But I mean, anything at all with journalism or sports or TV, I'm not a OU spokesperson, but I mean, they have an outstanding program. Um, it's a lot of hands-on stuff. I think she was telling me you guys either have someone who went through your program here and is now on WUB down there, which is their PBS program. Um, it's just phenomenal. I learned so much more by doing hands-on stuff through that program than I even did with the journalism program. They're just, it's phenomenal down there. So I would encourage anyone to look there that, um, that you wanted, that you're looking at schools. Did you want to, do you have a question? It's a good question. The, the, uh, not usually. We have a policy at our station, and that's if you don't feel safe, you don't go. Or if, let me rephrase, if you don't feel safe, you don't stay. <laughs> um, the, the reason I say that would be, let's say we're, we're at a, um, some sort of violent crime scene, because that happens in Columbus. Um, yes, depending, <laughs> yeah. So let's say there's a shooting on a certain street, and it's a really bad part of town. But when you, you go and you cover the story initially because, I mean, there's a big police presence there. And you know you feel safe. But let's say the police leave, and it's like, I don't really know how I feel about being out here at 5 in the morning by myself. It's dark, so no street lights. The station's policy is if you don't feel safe, they'll move you. Um, we'll either go to the police department, or we'll go to a, a police substation down the street. Or we'll go to the jail if they got someone in custody. Or we'll go to the hospital where the person was taken if they were shot or stabbed or whatever happened that morning. Um, so I, I've never felt unsafe. I know that, for instance, we do a lot of door knocks in our business, which would be let's, it's, it's part of the business I don't like at all. But let's say, you know, a tragedy would happen in a family and you want to try to talk to the family. So you would go to their house. Or let's say someone. The better example to answer your question would be, let's say there's a suspect in court who's accused of something really bad, murder. Um, and the family didn't show to court, but you want to try to talk to their family as well to get balance to your story. So they'll send me, oftentimes by myself, to do that door knock. And if I don't ever feel safe doing that, they'll send someone else with me. Um, but the craziest thing, excuse me, the craziest thing that's ever happened was I was, it was, I'd been here about six months and I was in North Columbus and I can't remember what street it was and there was a shooting at a, outside in a, in a grocery store parking lot, like a convenience store. And we showed up and we're doing the report and we wrap up. This is when I worked nights. So this was after the 11. So we're just waiting though because it was a Friday night and we have to wait afterwards to kind of see what develops because we don't actually don't have a Saturday morning crew. So the Friday crew kind of has to figure out what happened later on in the day, so that way we can pick it up on the day on Saturday. And the police were getting ready to leave, and there was just kind of like a, a, a mob kind of broke out, like on the, op on the other side of the tape between the two sides that were involved in this dispute that led to the shooting. And um, the police came over and said, are you guys going to be leaving soon? And, they, and we said, well, no, we're, and all the stations were there. And we said, no, you know, we're going to be hanging out for a bit. And they said, well, you're going to want to get in your life truck, because this could get ugly. And literally, we get in the truck, and then there's a shooting like 30 feet from where we were. 
No. We just heard it. Just heard it. I mean, it wasn't like it wasn't like for me to you. It was, you know, it was around the corner, but it was I mean, close enough that we could hear it. And then, you know, there's a mess over there, and they chased the person. They didn't actually shoot anyone. I think they just fired the gun in the air. But that was, and I've and I've had a friend who was down. Um, Do you guys hear about the shooting in Louisville a couple months ago? Um, I can't remember how many. It was awful. Um, but I had a friend I went to school with who was um, just finished a live report and was in her live truck. And this was a situation where it was literally from me to the camera, how close another shooting happened. And they jumped in their live truck and you know, shot the video of the police and stuff going back and forth. Um, thankfully, I've never had that happen to me. Um, I don't think I'd want that to happen to me. Yeah. But most days aren't like that. <laughs> I mean, most days are like, um, for me at least, today I got in, I went down to that bomb threat, and then I came up and I did reports on September 11th events around town. Or um, uh, last week I did a story where um, it actually was that murder that happened downtown. I went and talked to the business where the guy worked, the bar in the arena district. Um, and that was a, actually a really good story to do because a lot of times when violent crimes happen to people, relatives or friends or coworkers actually do want to talk because they find some sort of peace with that or they find that they're able to tell that person's story. And that's really what I try to do is, you know, talk to people about who was this person, what did they mean to you? Because people do want to share that story. And it's a way to to kind of talk about it and they also then can have something you know, a copy of the story to kind of remember what happened and remember their their loved one by. So most days are are not scary. Yeah. Um, I, I ask all my own questions. Um, and usually when I'm done, if I'm by myself, um, I always ask the most, important the, inter the most important question in the interview at the end is always, you know, is there anything I missed that you want to add? Or is there anything I didn't ask you? Because I can't tell you how many times in that moment that person says something that's just golden. That's really good. Or that you, I mean, sometimes you just won't think to ask. Um, the other thing that's really good with interviews is uh, using the power of silence, is what it's called. Is you, you don't have to rush the interview, but you, as you're asking questions, you just kind of give them a little bit of a pause, just kind of look at them. And they'll, they, it's, it's awkward. It's very, very awkward, but they'll keep going. And in that moment, sometimes you can get really good information or really good sound bites or stuff that you wouldn't normally get either. Well, it's, it's, it's not so much about feeling awkward. It's just the more, the more you get them talking, the more comfortable they get with you. And the more just genuine the information gets. Like, um, especially with stuff that's really emotional, um, if you just kind of, after they finish, just don't push them. Just kind of let it happen. And, and this not always. Sometimes it falls flat, and it really is awkward. And you just kind of move on. Um, but I ask my own questions. Yes? So, back on the weather thing, mm -hmm. you're, you're a meteorologist, I don't know who he is, but uh, does he ever question or in, or in the show or ever go against the National Weather Service forecast if he disagrees with it? I don't know because I haven't talked to Bill yet. Um, my experience with that has been, and, and, and I'm talking, speaking broadly on how it works, he, he will look at, a, he'll look at his computer models and he'll look at what the National Weather Service says and then he'll kind of determine what he thinks will happen. I don't think he reports exactly what the NWS says, but I don't think he contradicts them directly. You know what I mean? So I think he kind of says, this is what they say, this is what the computer models say, and this is what I think is going to happen based upon my knowledge and experience and how our maps work. I can ask him that, though, for you. I'll get your, your uh, information. I can ask him that question for you. Yes? Did I ever, like, start laughing or, like, crying or, like, couldn't stop doing something on TV? Coughing. You did? Mm-hmm. It happens. Has it, it hasn't happened. <laughs> what? You got the hiccups? Yeah, that would, be, that would be really bad. Um, you, you just get through it. Um, I, one time when I was down in Tennessee, I was on a live report, and I can't remember, I think it was just cold. We were talking about icy roads or something, because I was on an overpass. 
Um, and I, and I, I just had to stop and say, you know what, I'm sorry, it was just, you know, come back to me in a minute. Or I can't remember exactly what I said, but I stopped because I just could not. I mean, my throat got really tight. And you, know, you can't talk. And you, you just guys can talk. But in the mornings, um, every, every now and then, I'll have something happen. Um, Do you ever, like, yawn when you're talking? No. Because you're tired? No, because usually when, when, once I get out and going, the adrenaline's kind of there. What's dangerous is in between hits because then you're sitting in, in especially in the winter because it's dark and you're in your nice warm car and it's, you know, you're just kind of drifting off a little bit. Yeah. Um, so you were kind of talking about this before you came. Like, we have like 2,000 kids in our school and we're like, oh, like if we're on camera, like we might get nervous. Like, how do you, like, are you ever like nervous for any situation? Yeah, it, it, it depends. I'm actually more nervous when I do stuff in the studio when I have a teleprompter. You guys are talking about teleprompter. I'm actually more nervous when I do that than when I'm just out. Because I, I, I usually just make notes when I'm live anymore. I don't really script a whole lot. Um, so that makes me a little nervous. Um, but the, the, the easiest thing to do is to imagine, you, and the, the way I was taught, was just you know put your mom or your dad, or your sister, or your best friend, or your boyfriend, girlfriend, whoever you know you feel really comfortable talking to, in the camera, and you just talk to that person, and you don't. That way, you're talking to someone and not at something, because it's really hard. Because it, it's hard to remember that you know you're not you're not talking just to a camera, but there's someone you know at home watching you eating their cereal or whatever you know on their couch or cleaning or chasing their kids around. Um, <laughs> So it really is a conversation, but it's one way deal. So I think just imagining that you're talking to mom or whoever, and that kind of just helps it feel a little bit more natural. Yes, sorry, I'll get to you in a second. Um, on days of like, higher significance, like, so today, like September 11th, mm -hmm. you go into work like, kind of with a bit of dread, thinking like, oh, I got a lot on my plate today, or do you go into work thinking like, oh, today I got a lot, I can shoot her, I got a lot of stories I can get to. I don't know if I ever dread going. Um, I dread certain stories when they happen. Um, but those are typically like, um, I don't know, like, like press release stories. I don't like covering those. Um, but in terms of uh, dreading work, no. Um, and I think on a day like September 11th, when it was an experience that we all shared through television, it's, it's, it's kind of neat to go out and to see how everyone is still dealing with this and to go to, I went to a, um, a veterans group today and talked to them. I went to, uh, you know, and then we, we covered an event down at the county and then we covered an event downtown at the city, which is where I was before I came here because it was for my noon live shot. But just to see, you know, how people deal with, with that and how it's changed our city and our people and to talk to them about those issues I think is is kind of interesting and, and really special about what we do to show the people of Columbus how it's changed our city. So it's a lot of work, yes, um, but the bigger work days are the days when you have like a giant breaking news story. Like I don't know if you guys remember the, the train derailment we had a couple weeks, months ago now. Um, there was a train derailment explosion just by the fairgrounds. I mean, that was just pandemonium. Or um, I remember another big one. That's been the really biggest recent one. The, the, the storm we had, the, the AEP, where we lost all the power recently from the wind. Great yeah, that was, that was, um, that's crazy. And that is a lot of work. Um, but it's fun. I mean, the time just, just goes right by. You're never bored at work, I don't think. Yeah. How long have you been on ABC? Six uh, two and a half years. I just signed my second contract with them. What do you mean messed up really bad? No. 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 Um, I don't think I've seen anyone at our station do that. Um, you can find lots of stuff on YouTube. Um, are you talking about like slip up like Curse words and stuff like you see like on with anchors do or stuff like that. Um, I thankfully have not. 
And I, I haven't personally seen anyone, but you can find lots of people on YouTube that have. And you sit and you sit and you, and you laugh at that, but you go, oh God, please don't let that happen to me. Um, because one day it, it inevitably will. Yeah. What's your favorite story you've ever covered? That's a good question. Um, favorite story? I have two. Um, I, I uh, covered recently, well, about three or four months ago, a story about a, uh, what are they called? It's a nonprofit in Xenia, Ohio. Do you guys know where that is over by Dayton? It's called Four Paws for Ability. It's, a, uh, it's an agency that connects um, service dogs, so um, like seeing eye dogs, things like that, with kids with disabilities. But back in the early 90s, there wasn't anyone that was doing that. So this, age, this, this woman who lives in Xenia, Ohio, started this agency that now services service dogs for the entire world. I mean, people come from all over the world to come to Xenia, Ohio. So we talked to this woman from Alaska. They have dogs, again, all over the place. But it was just really cool to see how those dogs change those kids' lives. Um, um, it's not just seeing eye dogs. They, were, they have dogs that can sense seizures. They can sense when chemical imbalances happen within the brain up to an hour before a seizure happens, um, helping kids. Um, with autism, deal with their emotional outbursts, things like that. Second favorite story, down in Tennessee, there was a, uh, these crop circles appeared one day. Hey, you're rolling your eyes already. In this field, and this woman who owned this field was probably the better part of 90 years old, and she was really rural East Tennessee. She had dentures in. Um, she's probably about this big, and she's really tiny, walked with a cane. And she had dentures in, but when she would talk, they weren't sealed on their mouth, so they were kind of, you know, kind of clicking. You know, she talked. And the best question, and the reason I love the story so much, was she said, I said, well, do you think it's aliens? She goes, well, yeah, I think it's aliens. And I said, are you scared? And she goes, no. And I said, well, why aren't you scared? She goes, well, I'll go talk to them. And I said, well, do you speak alien? She said, no, they damn well better speak English. <laughs> It was really scary to see a 90-year-old woman say that. It was really, really funny. <laughs> um, so those are fun stories. I mean, stuff like that that's memorable and, and fun are great stories to tell. You, what, what, you guys shoot on those kind of cameras? Is that those kind of cameras you use? We actually, there's a lot of... And we have three studio cameras in the other room that are There's actually a lot of stations these days that use those almost exact same cameras, same size. Um, I actually, I should have brought it in. I actually shoot on a big, like a new, if you guys have like a news camera. I mean, it's, you know, it's a big, it's about this big. It's about 35 pounds. Um, but a lot of stations are using those now, so it's really cool if you guys get experience on those. It's a smaller um, prosumer camera. They're great. Our tripods look almost identical to that, too. It's really cool stuff. Sure, and that's similar to the camera I have out, or a tripod I have in my car. Mine's just a little bigger. Can you talk a little bit more about, you said that you kind of have to do a little bit of everything. Can you touch on that real quick before they leave about, yeah. you don't just get to be talent, or you don't just get to be talent? Correct. You know yeah, the um, growing trend in, in the TV world is to have one person do multiple jobs. So like as a reporter, um, I will shoot my own video, I will find my own stories, I'll set up all my own interviews, I'll go out and do the interviews, shoot the video, come back, edit it, cut it, front it on TV, which is the fun part, which is what everyone sees, and then I post it then to the web. So there's like this, this whole spectrum of, of work that no one sees. You do, and I work nine hours today for like 30 seconds on TV. So it's, it's a lot of work, but it's really, it's a lot of fun, and it's just, the more you can do, the more you learn how to do, especially here in school, which you guys are doing right now, the better off you guys are going to be. Yeah, yes. Yeah, I'll do you for you. Sorry. In the mornings I do just because they haven't figured out a way to have me be live by myself. That day is coming. I mean, it's, it's, it's inevitable. You can, we can do, um, I mean, I can pull out, I have an iPhone for work, and we can Skype with that. And we've, we've done that before, where there's literally breaking news, I'm the first person there, 
Skype in front of you, Skype, here I am, blah, 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 flip around and show what's going on. I had a photographer there because at that point we, we had a live truck there and, and that type of deal. So in the mornings, yes, um, but usually after the morning live shots, we'll break apart and he'll go to do one story and I'll go off on my own because I can be mobile that way. So the, the, there will always be photographers, I think, but the number of strictly people who report and people who just shoot, it's growing slimmer because even our photographers will go out and they'll have to do their own interviews. Like if they don't have a reporter there, you'll, you'll pick up, depending upon what the news of the day is, you know, they may have a photographer who's with another reporter split off and they'll go grab X, Y, and Z interview somewhere for another reporter who's working on a different story. So the, the cross work applies to every position as well. We have an, we, I even know a photographer down in Tennessee I work with who actually wrote, who wrote stories. He just didn't voice them. He didn't like the way his voice sounded. So he, he did everything too. And then the an anchor just voiced it over. Yes. Do you have to have like a certain sorry. Do you have to have like a certain number of like stories like each week or something? Or do you just kinda like the story that's complete? Um well typically in the in the and I'm the exception because I'm again the, the morning person, so I'm doing whatever happens that day. Yeah. So literally I think Monday I did five different stories. Um and that that was just for the morning shows because we had so much going on that day. Mm -hmm. um, most of our day side reporters, people who come in at nine o'clock and work till seven. Um, they'll typically do at least two, two what are called packages, and those are minute 20 tracked they with you know, sound bites and natural sound and things like that in them. So they typically do two stories a day. Um, a lot of times it'll be one bigger story and a couple little smaller stories, just kind of news of, news of, the, news of the day, whatever's happening, whatever the demands are. And did you have another question? Yeah, um, how Um, I did. Like, Here in, in Columbus, the furthest I've been is um, Mentor, been. suburb of Cleveland. Um, when I worked in Tennessee, I went to Virginia Tech when that happened. Um, and that was the better part of like I can't remember, it was a six, seven hour drive. Um, Most of them are local, though. I know we've sent, I mean, we send our, our political reporters going all over the state right now because of the various presidential campaigns that are coming to town. Um, most of them are local, though. Anything else? Yeah. Uh, you said you write your own stories. Do you have to get them okay by someone? Yes. They go through a manager just to make sure that, to look for grammatical things, but also just have someone look at it to make sure that there's no legal issues there.